Hi everyone, a bit of a different video today. Unfortunately, I have experienced a sports injury. I ruptured my Achilles tendon. So I want to go over week by week what that will look like and hopefully this video can help you if you've experienced the same injury, if you think you have the same injury. So we'll go over how it happened, why I chose surgery, what to expect in this first week, and then some tips and tricks that'll help you to get through this first week. How did I do it? Well, I was playing football and there was a loose ball and as I pushed off my back leg, which was my left, I felt a snap and a pop in the back of my calf and it actually felt like somebody had hit me from behind. So I turned around to see and there wasn't anybody there. At that point, I knew something wasn't quite right. When I went to put pressure on that left foot, I couldn't really do a whole lot, couldn't put the heel to the ground. I wasn't able to flex the calf muscle, so that was obviously a problem. So following that, I did go to see a doctor at the urgent care, which if you are in America, I don't necessarily recommend because the only thing they were going to do was to get me to a specialist. So you can bypass that. If you're in an area, you can look up some specialists, which are orthopedic surgeons that accept walk-ins, and that's what I did. I managed to get into a specialist, which bypassed going to the ER. In two or three steps, we got straight into the specialist. Once I met with the specialist orthopedic surgeon, he basically confirmed that it was a rupture, a complete rupture of the Achilles tendon. And then he gave me the options, which looked to do surgery and not surgery, he looked at the pros and cons of both, and just basically looked at me as an individual and what would be best for me. Now the doctor is going to have your best interest here, so make sure you speak to them to see what's best for you. In my case, surgery was a better option based on my age and how active I am in my day-to-day -day life. So that's what we decided to go for. And the surgery was scheduled for six days after the initial rupture. What to expect on the day of surgery is an outpatient surgery. So you will go in to have surgery. Surgery will take about an hour or so. It'll probably give you an hour and a half to come round after the surgery, after the medicine starts to wear off. And then they'll leave you to go home and get resting, get icing. I do encourage that you, when someone is with you during, after surgery, that you have a notepad or a phone to take a lot of notes because when I did come round after being put to sleep, there was a lot of information thrown at me. And at that point, you're in no state of mind. Take that information in and keep it for later on. So make sure you can write it down, put it in your phone, just somewhere you can refer back to later on when you're a bit more with it. You come out of surgery, I'm in sort of like a soft cast just to keep the foot in a certain position. Then it's wrapped up too, and there's no weight bearing for the whole week. As far as pain goes, for the first two or three days, it was quite painful. Pain medicines obviously help with that, so I encourage you to use those. Also encourage you to have the aspirin, which will prevent blood clots, which is important because you're elevating your foot so much. But after the two or three, so on the fourth day, pain was more or less gone. Haven't taken any painkillers since, and no real pain there, more just discomfort not being able to use the leg, but no pain from the actual surgery, which is good. Also with that, your appetite for the first two or three days, which I assume would be normal from surgery, is not quite the same. You don't really want to eat a whole lot first two or three days. Your body's still recovering. It's been through a traumatic experience. So let it recover. Make sure you do get a lot of fruits and vegetables in though. By the fourth day, again, you'll be back to eating your normal day-to-day -day food. Now, I mentioned earlier how icing is very important. When I was finished at the surgery, the doctor did give me this, which is an air cast, which basically goes onto your ankle here. You put your foot in here, you Velcro it up, and then there's a hose which comes from the cooler that comes with it, and you put ice water in the cooler, plug the hose into here, and then it fills itself with cold ice water, which effectively ices your leg. And this is what the cooler looks like that comes with that air cast. So you pop this end of the hose into the sleeve, and very effective. Definitely stays cool all day. You want to top the ice off uh, normally every night before you go to bed so the next day is fresh. Tips and tricks and learns from the first week that hopefully will help you if you are unfortunately in the same situation. The first one would be a wedge. Now a wedge is like a triangular cushion with a flat top that you can use to elevate your foot. For me, I unfortunately had some cushions and pillows lying around the house that were the perfect height stacked up. But if you do feel more comfortable a wedge, Pretty cheap option to get online and it keeps it a good height above the heart. So that's one option. Secondly, I recommend getting a stool and a sleeve for the leg to go into the shower. The sleeve will look like this online. It's just a big bag basically that goes over your foot, which is watertight, seal tight there. So it keeps it all dry because you cannot get that leg wet at the moment. Also, I encourage you to have a schedule and an alarm set on your phone so you know when to take your medicines and when to ice. And also when to move your leg too, this is an important tip, is the doctor did tell me to move the leg 25 times per hour. And that can just be bending your knees or trying to wiggle your toes a little bit. But because you're elevating so much, you still want to get some blood flow going around. So it's important for me it was just to bend the leg a few times, wiggle the toes. And as the days went by, you can wiggle your toes more and more. So if the first day or two, you can't move them too much, don't be too disheartened. It will get better in this week. And by four or five and six days, you're getting your toes more or less normal for me. The last tip I can give you is find things to do. 
You are gonna be sitting down on the sofa in your bed a lot and that's important and be okay with it. So if you're into reading books, for me, I bought some Lego to build, but find something that entertains you, maybe learn a new skill. But just be okay that this first week is a big week of rest and it's one week down, one step closer to getting back to where we wanna be, which is back to our normal lives. And that basically sums it up for week one. Not very eventful. The surgery is the most eventful part of the week. After that, it's just resting, take your time, be patient with it, listen to your body, get the ice on it. Importantly, you take the medication too. Once you start feeling the pain, don't worry about the painkillers, but to keep up with the aspirin too. Lots of fluids in your body, lots of fruit and vegetable, keep eating. Next week is week two, and we should be able to get this cast off and maybe look at therapy. So until then, take care of yourself, and we'll see you next week.